this is my little hangar room and it is a little room as most of my planes, other planes are in the loft uh, Veron Impala electrified, Super 60 electrified and some other stuff I can't remember but looking around he's only about 8 foot square but it's cosy so let's start up there crash model that one up there is interesting it's a Camco Cloud Rider electrified by myself but this model must be oh, probably 30 years old I'm flowing it this season great little fly though flying on 35 meg hence the aerial um, Calypso you'll probably recognize as uh, sorry all foam electric job fly zone can never remember lovely model to fly with flaps this is a little indoor or converted to indoor rubber powered plane 1 pound 90 I think it cost just throw some electrics in it I've got a video on it if you wanted to read it watch it this one is a another restored model it's a kit made originally by I think a Swedish Svensson company and that's a biplane and it's the wings behind it's the Wayfarer I had to rebuild the tails yeah it was a lot of work actually more work than I thought but then these things generally are but these models have probably caught your eye it's my micro aces most of them micro aces is a company in Dorset in the UK makes these little Depron foam pre-printed foam which makes lovely models and they all fly very similarly all pretty easy DH2 pusher I like the early First World War planes actually they look better like that don't they no, not enough room Fokker D7 DH2 Pusher SE5A British fighter Fokker triplane of course this is a beautiful little kit they brought out recently it's a sock with camel made under license by Rushton's uh, this was a colour scheme they did wasn't in the war but for publicity I think but lovely little flyer this is a little UFO flying saucer which <laughs> flies great see the wing section on that flies super duper this one here is an own design Cessna made out of underfloor insulation uh, with carbon fiber reinforcement tough as old boots this model's flown into the walls loads of times but keeps bouncing back and this one's a Banggood balsa of course it's a tiger moth not so good with the walls but lovely little flyer all the same coloured with it's faded slightly um, this felt tip pen for lightweight it flies very sweetly this one's uh, another own design had a floor insulation the idea was to fly up cut the engine and glide but it flies so fast but without motor over the prop wash over the controls it doesn't really steer very well so it's um engine on job but yeah whips around the uh, sky this one does rubber powered spitfire <laughs> bit of fun this is just a frankenstein it was supposed to be an aerobatic model it's got huge ailerons but it really is um, not very good but I'll probably scrap it for the radio gear for very long uh, 
this little list starting at the top is a Torb. I like old models. I like planes look like planes. This was tissue covered, gosh, 20 years ago perhaps. Yeah, 20, maybe a little bit more tissues. A little bit torn there. Torb, of course, German, pre-First World War plane. Looks like a bird. Very sweet little flyer, no vices. All foam spitfire. V-tracks and flaps. Beautiful bird to fly. Looks superb in the sky. That's by um, Durafly. Below that one we've got the Cambria Eagle, Slingsby Eagle. Again, another old model which I restored. Which uh, There's a video on my channel. It tells you all about it. It's me in the cockpit. And there's the wings. I made the wings. It was a single piece wing, but I made it a two piece wing just so you know. Obviously, it's easier to transport. Below that, we got the Hobby King Navy Cub. Can you say originally made for FPV? I think, but you could learn to fly on it. They're so easy to fly. Below that one, this is the wings for a plane a friend of mine built. Uh, wind shift he's called it or balsa built up it's an uh, electric glider this is the fuselage V-tail as yet unflown but it looks like it should fly very nice so we'll see tucked in in between is the Keelcroft twice sized pixie originally a rubber powered plane converted to electric for those light wind days again video on the YouTube if you want to watch it. Uh, the little, everyone's got one of these now I think, just converted. Chuck around glider, pretty indestructible. Uh, some transmitters back there. 35 meg one for the Camco. DX6i for spares. And another 35 meg for spares for that one. Three DX6 size there. The reason I've got three is because we've only got 10 model memory. It's amazing how much quickly you fill them up. I'm sure you all know. Uh, I've got Gropner MZ24 transmitter under here, which is my nice one. But they are a bit of a devil to program because I don't speak German, but the instruction book is pretty thick on it. But beautiful transmitter all the same. Plenty of YouTube videos that tell you how to program it if you want to see it. If you've got one I mean. And this is where I do all my YouTubing. My channel. I've now got 76 subscribers. Thank you everybody. Hope you're enjoying my input. Uh, the latest videos I put up was the Hobby King. I like to do on-board filming um, and editing. It's quite satisfying. So you've got the footage on the ground, the footage in the air. Let's turn it down a little bit. Footage in the air, different angles, a bit of music. It was a windy day, by the way, that's why it was a bit of a rubbishy takeoff but I think they had mounted the camera under the struts for that shot so it was just mounted under here just rubber banded on no vibration so pretty good really this was up at the uh, Newton Abbott Exeter and District Radio Flying Club which I'm a member of I skim through it a little bit. So you, there's me, you intercut it with a bit of ground shots. Obviously the camera's not in the plane there because it's on my, 
on my um, hat cam the Mobius then edit it back into onto the plane again and also flew the plane with the camera pointing straight down which wasn't that successful except for the landing really where as you can see the shadow so inset shadow and then a rear shot again inset in music fades out and finally the, the um, video fades out this one I wanted to show you because it's the Cambria Eagle this one up on the moors also a member of the Dartmoor slope sawing club if anyone fancies slope sawing on Dartmoor or on our site up at Little Holden just outside Tynmouth but she flies pretty well I did read a couple of early forum reports about it tip stalling but so when I recovered the wings I twisted in a little bit of washout and it doesn't show any real signs of tip stalling at all so I'm quite pleased with that When I see an old model that needs restoring, I just can't break it up. I've just got to put it back together again. There she goes. I don't know if you notice, I've made a little subscribe button down in the corner. Obviously a Spitfire plan form. Oh, I was quite pleased with that. And moving on to the end, let's see Dartmoor Slope Sawing Club. But that's not the logo anymore because we've redesigned it. But if I go back to my video page, I've got videos on the Micro Aces kits. There's that indoor one I was just saying about. Oh, the Slow Poke. I've sold that one on now. That was a nice easy flyer. Some videos on my channel. Uh, some videos on the flight sim is a transmitter, real flight, super little flight sim that is. How to fly a plane towards yourself. And I did another flight sim one, some slope soaring with the Calypso glider, funnily enough, which was on there. The BMFAA test, what's involved in the fixed wing. It's had seven and a half thousand views, two years. So that's um, obviously a popular subject. I've got a Veron Impala in the loft, a Super 60, both of which are old models which I've restored. The Impala. Yeah, that's 16. Gosh, three years ago. Let's skip forward a bit. For those of you who don't know the Veron Impala, a 72 inch one piece wing. I think the wing ribs were unique at the time because they were cast out of ABS plastic. Hollow. Come on, Cliff, where's the model? Here it comes. I download all my music from YouTube actually because it's all royalty free then. Obviously the camera's just sitting on the tripod on the ground. I think it was quite a hot day that was actually. That's why nobody else was up there. Must have been in the 70s. 70 degrees Fahrenheit that is. Not 1970s. <laughs> Duck. Yeah, Super 60 videos. So I try and keep the videos just to aeroplanes now. It's an old fun fly from 20 years ago at the Torbay Club. Loads of videos of the Swenson biplane there. 
couple of channels that I like watching. This is a good one. Robert Patrinsic, aka Captain Robert and his crazy brother. Adverts and his brother the, from Slovenia. They produce loads of videos. I don't know where they got on. They got loads of videos. Probably hundreds by now. Seven, 19,000 subscribers. But there he is. Look. What's uh, unusual about him is the um, they do their unboxing. They do their videos uncut. As it comes off the uh, camera, it's straight onto YouTube. So look at him, what a character he is. But let, let's skip forward. He's got a, a box of stuff. What's he undoing? Oh, oh t-shirts, come on, focus, focus. <laughs> They're selling t-shirts now. Brilliant. Oh yeah. But his channel is really uh, fun to watch. Old planes, new planes. You can see his videos. How many videos they got? Oh, I don't know if it says, but all the latest Hobby King stuff. They get sent stuff. E flight stuff, they buy most of their stuff, but they love their saluting. Probably the most entertaining channel out there. One of the other channels I like to watch is this one here John Woodfield down in Cornwall. Look at his collection, I mean, look at those. He seems to build a model a week, a lot of old timers, a lot of clear film. They are just so relaxing to watch. Let's take a sample. Let's take that one. Look at this. Look at that. Isn't that just superb? I think he gets his wife to do the video in. But stunning model, stunning backdrop. And not bad flying either, John. <laughs> Superb. But if you want to watch, just, just um, Google John Woodfield on YouTube and you'll find his videos. If you haven't seen them, they're really amazing. PSS, uh, which if you don't know stands for... Uh, scale slope sawing power what's it stand for anyway scale models but he does all these lovely clear film videos so very relaxing to watch there's a <laughs> go up the funky chicken that was funny let's uh, have a quick look at that okay Look at that. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Cracking tune goes with it. I'm oh, sitting here with a grin on my face. I think probably everybody is. Let's read some comments. Flies well as a slope model. Next project has to be a flying pig. Brought back a smile on my face. Thanks again, German. Very original. Ha ha. Fun to watch. Congratulations. What tricky? What chickens dream about? And someone's asked what sort of camera he's using. Panasonic bridge camera. My wife likes it because it has a viewfinder, so it's easy to keep the plane in shot. Panasonic bridge. Camera, I have to Google that. But this the flying chicken is great. Anyway, it's an easy way to while away the evening, isn't it? That's my little hanger then. Not much. 
but full of enthusiasm. Oh, dreaded drone. Hardly flown. Some models to build. Nice supply of balsa here. Just no time to put together an aeroplane. Foamy to build, another foamy to build. Oh, a sop with triplane from micro aces in the drawer to put together. A couple of those little indoor helicopters, which are good fun. Should we fly one? Just for a laugh. Just very quickly. Let's see if I can do it in here. Oh, it's not binding. Let's try again. Should bind. It's one of John's. Here we go. All right. Because you get a lot of turbulence in here with the uh, pot wash. When I first got this, I saw some kid flying it around his bedroom. I thought, that looks oh, so tricky. Oops. And it is. But never mind. No damage done. Good old Hobby King. Anyway, gotta go. That's my hanger. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like it.